marvelous Melbourne. This is a panoramic view from the Moore House spire of St. Paul's Cathedral. You will see in the distance the National War Memorial, which is in progress of construction. This is St. Kilda Road. It is four miles long and is three chains wide. At each side, there are drives for one-way motor car traffic. The middle track is for trams and commercial vehicles. This splendid road has the most beautiful entry into a city that the imagination can conceive. The King and Queen, the Prince of Wales, and other distinguished visitors have driven along this splendid highway. Here we have Prince's Bridge. Originally, there was a crude sort of punt there, and in 1850 came Lennox's One Arch Bridge. In 1886, the present beautiful structure was commenced. This is Collins Street, one of the main arteries of the city, and has great architectural beauty. While so many towns arose haphazard, Melbourne was surveyed and laid out with wonderful vision. It was due to the foresight of Robert Hoddle that the streets were made 99 feet wide and that the infant town was laid out on a rectangular plan. This is the town hall. Parliament House is our most historic building. The ghost of all the great men in our political history haunt its corridors and halls. It is one of the world's gems of classic architecture. It was here that the federal houses of legislature debated for upwards of 30 years before their removal to Canberra. Opened in 1856, this is one of the most beautiful and impressive buildings in Australia. We have a glimpse here through the columns of the Windsor Hotel. This building is another mass of architecture. It was erected for the Great Exhibition in 1880. Here, His Majesty the King opened the first federal parliament. It is surrounded by beautifully laid out grounds, and it is curious to remember that these grounds were once the city's rubbish tip. The public library was, when Melbourne was only 30 years old, after the first house was built, this public library and national art gallery was founded. It was the first public library in Australia, and it has the largest concrete dome in the world. This is Joan of Arc by the French sculptor Fermier. The University of Melbourne was founded in the same year as the public library, Ormond College. This is the Wilson Hall, another beautiful structure. And this, the Newman College, designed by Walter Burley Griffin the same architect who designed Canberra. This is a delightful glimpse of Fitzroy Gardens with its sweeping lawns and umbrageous trees. These gardens are a delight. They are practically in the heart of the city and daily at the lunch hour, the busy workers come here for an hour's sylvan treat. This avenue is of Moreton Bay fig trees, which, of course, are indigenous to Australia. The broad lawns need constant attention. Here are some city visitors enjoying a walk through the glorious foliage of these trees and admiring the beauties of the lily ponds which are an added charm to the Fitzroy Gardens. We have a view of Melbourne from the river bank. The towers and turrets of the city make an imposing skyline. This part of the river is where the Henley on Yarra festival is held each year attracting vast, pleasure-seeking crowds. The riverbanks are then the people's playground, but at any time they have their charm, and Old Man River just goes rolling along. And 
another glimpse of the Prince's Bridge. Here from the north bank of the river, we have a view of the beautiful Three Arch Bridge. This is the entrance to the Botanical Gardens. They are the biggest gardens in Australia and cover 103 acres. And there are 12 or 13 acres of lake, which is populous with wildflowers. Its spacious lawns are the playgrounds of laughing children and beneath its shady trees students pore over their books and lovers whisper sweet nothing. Travellers sometimes say that it is amongst the world's finest gardens and that we should be proud of our possession. Another glimpse of one of the beautiful lakes Visitors are never tired of admiring the swan. This is the Temple of the Winds and was erected as a memorial to the founder of the Botanical Gardens, our first governor, or rather superintendent. Charles Joseph Latrobe. This uh, lake is rarely a bit of the old Yarra. In the old days, it kinked in at this spot and it is still retained for sentimental reasons, although the real river is now a quarter of a mile away. This is the director of the gardens, Mr. Ray and he is indicating the spot where the boatloads of passengers used to land to visit the garden. This is the famous old red gum known as Separation Tree. Under this tree, on November the 15th, 1850, public rejoicings took place in celebration of the authorized separation of the colony of Victoria. The actual separation was on July the 1st, 1851. Mr. Ray is indicating with his stick the height of the flood in 1863. Running along the River Yarra, east from Prince's Bridge and skirting the Botanical Gardens, Alexandra Avenue is a most delightful boulevard. It has pleasant walks for pedestrians, a splendid road for motor cars and a tan track for horse riding through a charming avenue. The luxuriant foliage along the Alexander Drive is a feature of this beautiful spot. It would be hard to find anywhere a more inviting track than this for a canter through the trees. Melbourne is architecturally the finest city in the Commonwealth, but it has a city to be envied. 